Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'm here with uh, Sean Murphy. How are you doing? Hey man, happy new year. Happy new year to you. It's uh, We're off with a bang. Yeah man, I, uh, I know I was a guest of yours recently, um, yeah. and I, I was going to wait a full year before I talked to you about Twitter and why I left, but with New Year's resolutions going around and things happening lately on Twitter and social media, uh, it seemed like maybe a good time to maybe do this sooner than later. So I'm happy to have you on board with me on this. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm I'm happy to get your insight, and uh, yeah, we don't need to wait a year on this stuff. Everybody always likes to hear from you, so yeah. <laughs> I don't want to wear out. Well, you got really good uh, followers. Normally, uh, even on my own YouTube channel, when I did it, I had you know 10 percent trolls. But uh, I look at the comments from your folks, and people are fair, and they give me the benefit of the doubt, and they're generally nice. So I, I do appreciate your people. No, there. It's I'm I'm quite surprised actually. The the comments are usually quite good, and you're you're never you're not supposed to avoid the YouTube comments, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think so. This has been a topic we've talked about before, and I'm I'm excited to get your perspective on it. Particularly, so uh, maybe the best place to begin is you had a pretty active social media presence. You had accounts, and and you were putting stuff out there, and then you you walked away. Yeah, I I got. A, a three different waves of things that happened to me in the past year that put me in the crosshairs. And I finally did a cost benefit analysis and I realized it's just not worth, I have too much to lose at this point. Uh, not just sales and customers, if I say the wrong thing, but mis friends who choose to misinterpret things. Uh, otherwise good people who I think are a little hijacked by social media. Sometimes we can get into that later. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I definitely want to share my bit. And uh, as I said before we recorded, like I'm not here to speak on behalf of DC. I'm not commenting on DC or Marvel or any specific publisher. I'm not, there's nothing I'm going to say that's a coded, veiled attack on any creator. <laughs> if you like to use Twitter, great. But there's a lot of people uh, who are going to thinking about stepping away. And they're on the fence, and you talk to them too. They're just as disgusted with this as I was, and, and you are. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a village elder who's seen a lot in the past 17 years in this industry, if you're curious what I think, here it is. Here are my opinions and my ideas, but I don't want you to think I'm attacking anybody because I'm not. A lot of people think Google's just a search box and Facebook's just a place to see what my friends are doing. What they don't realize is there's entire teams of engineers whose job is to use your psychology against you. Left, right, I don't care what your politics are. I think we're all just exhausted by it. And we, the people are actively, like a new trend now is taking a social media break and just getting away from all of it. And people generally report that they feel much better after stepping away, you know? Yeah. There's been a lot of documentaries, and and I think throughout our time, I'll get some clips up here uh, around this, and and more and more the conversations kind of moving to you should view social media as a as a bit of a drug. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in a social dilemma, which we'll talk about, they said that there's only two products that uh, you call them customers users. One <laughs> is drugs, and one is uh, social media. Joe, yeah. that was a pretty good point. <laughs> painful but yes it's I, yeah. I, and everybody I mean, it, it, sorry it, it just I, I always hear from people when they say hey have you thought of taking a break or stepping away it's like well it's not that bad yeah. I've got under control which sounds very much like a drug or <laughs> I can't leave it I need it I, I have to have it as key to my business Yeah, um, you can't put it it's like a, a, a cigarette break it's nicotine yeah. it's do dopamine hit it's uh, you know alcohol it distracts you sometimes it may it causes you to make mistakes the penalty you pay if you do too much of it how is that not like social media honestly you know think of all the wasted calories creators and readers are burning in their brains just live it that's something that they saw on comic book twitter that literally has nothing to do with them nor affects their reading habit at all but th those are the thoughts that keep them up at night and it's like what are we doing to ourselves? Like I get that it's yeah. fun to see the train wreck and the car crash, so to speak. But at some point it's just, it's just a little incestuous and self-indulgent and just flat out dangerous. And I, I don't think it's an overstatement to treat it as a kind of a drug. And with every drug comes a high, a moment when one feels like they're on top of the world and nothing can stop them until everything just comes crashing down again. For me, even if the picture I've posted looks nothing like me or isn't real at all, 
When the likes and the comments start pouring in, that's the high. I feel people must like me. My self-esteem goes up and I feel this temporary happiness and this temporary joy. I, you know, I also know when it's quiet, this it, it feels like there's a lot of people just itching for, yeah. I mean, there's got to be drama somewhere. And, and to watch some yeah. of these blow-ups, the, uh, the, the one about the talking heads in pages or, you know. Oh, they, my they're, God. How embarrassing was that for everybody? That was just a bad yeah, two days or whatever it was. And w it's funny because when it goes quiet for a while, it's almost like countdown till something that's we need some more blood. You know, the sharks are going to get tired. Like when it's been three days without a blow up, any little tiny thing that, that could happen right now is going to hit the news. You know, like it, it's just like the longer it goes without a, a school shooting, the more likely it feels like it's just countdown till the next one. Yeah, it's a grim way yeah. people do this and and i think it, it leads some to create their own drama because it's just it's yeah. too quiet around here we got to get yeah. some action yeah well i you know the in the nicest the, when i started on twitter my thought was it's a platform it's like a stage there's a microphone and i can get up there and i can share news about things i'm putting out there i can talk to my customers and readers um i can give them a little bit of who i am and maybe if they're already a sean murphy user they can be more <laughs> of a sean you know what i mean it's, you know, I'll, I'll be their drug. And uh, that seems like a pretty fair, innocent thought. And if you're just starting out in your career, I think it's a good argument to be made. To If you can tolerate it, you should be on Twitter and you should be promoting yourself. But the bigger you get, the more successful you are, the more that stage is filled with like German razor wire and trap doors <laughs> and laser beams and the mic's unplugged. And then when you do go up there to speak, half of the crowd is hoping you're going to fuck up and take yep. a dive somehow like they're waiting for you to screw up just so they can throw something at you and then at some point it's like is it worth touching that microphone anymore you know <laughs> yeah so i mean if you're like a newer person in the industry i say go ahead use twitter but be careful if you're uh, you know still getting your footing and you're like a you know short you've been a pro for a few years but not that long maybe but the longer you're around i think the less likely i think that's why you're seeing some of the old timers tap out or at least change their Twitter behavior completely to just do like business only posts and stay out of drama as much as they can. Part of the way I'm trying to able to pull that off is because it turns out if you treat your attention with respect, so you don't fragment it, you allow it to stay whole, you, you preserve your ability to concentrate. When it comes time to work, you can actually do one thing after another and do it with intensity. And intensity can be traded for time. It's surprising how much you can get done in an eight hour day if you're able to give each thing intense concentration after another. You can't help when you're a creator to want to be famous and to want people to want to know what you're thinking. It's hard not to step on that soapbox and to feel like a bit of a rock star. Like I really try not to, my whole career I tried not to be that guy. And it's hard because like there's that bit of me that wants to be like Jim Morrison and just be like, ah, fuck you. This is what I think, ah, you know, and do a mic drop. But uh, it's, you got to I think you got to fight that urge and try to play it smart, you know, And I, but I, I don't know. I mean, there's so many creators that want they're jealous of, of your so, quote unquote fame. When I say fame, I'm talking lowercase f nerdy yeah. comic book fame, like <laughs> when I, a mile from a convention. No one fucking knows who I am. And that's the way it should be. But. Uh, if you get famous on the convention floor, you get other creators like glaring at you because they want that. And sure. they have all these things in their head that they want to shout about, but they're not famous enough yet. And the minute they get on a big book, they just are like, all right, here we go. And they just like read you the, their greatest hits of thing bitch about. And uh, you and I have talked off the re um, offline about some of these people that annoy both of us. And it's almost like they were waiting until they were just famous or powerful enough. And they just had to like start strutting around like a dick. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I see it, the but, hook for drama, like you see these tweets that say things like, "I want to thank everybody for your kindness and support for the horrible events that happened yesterday," which I don't mm -hmm. want to talk about, but uh, th thank you. Or, and it's like, why? Why would you post that? Like, what's the value of, of yeah. what you're doing there? Like, nobody knows what you're talking about. Are you fishing for somebody to say, "Oh, please tell me about the horrible thing that happened to you"? Like, what is what's going on yeah. there? It doesn't help anything. Yeah. I mean, I think this, you've mentioned a few kinds of tweets that you always dislike, and I would agree with you. Just to make a quick list here, and you can add yeah. to this too. I don't think creators should ever tweet, ooh, I got a big secret. I can't tell you what it is. Ooh, if you oh, only yeah. knew what I was like, that, when it, that kind of tweet, just save it. Or, 
<laughs> just it's yeah. the worst. <laughs> yeah, or the, the kind of tweet that you just mentioned where it's like coded, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, yeah, whatever you said, I totally agree. Like that tweet doesn't need to go out there. It's ones that seem to feed just just conflict. It's it's the other one where like somebody posts a little sideways eyes emoji and it's like, I don't know what's going on with that guy today, but you know, mm -hmm. that on him. And it's like, I'm not going to say who, but that person's a real villain today. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. DM me if you want to know who, that kind of yeah. thing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also, this is one that I think um, I, I would suspect a lot of creators don't necessarily understand how much it irritates customers. And that's the, hey, I've got an advanced look at my comic and I'll happily share it with all the other creators to get a get an early look, but not you fans. And it's oh, like, Jesus. yeah, <laughs> I get, you know, what, what you're saying is that you just want to get some outside opinion. I cool, but it comes across so like you get yeah. in the room with us and you know, everybody's entitled to their own life, of course. Yeah. But it just, it sets up this me versus you behavior that doesn't help anything. No, it doesn't. And I think that's a lot of the frustration out there is as the social media has given readers and customers an insight it's into the very uh, profound thoughts of many creators. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, seeing how the sausage is made. And uh, it looks like comics, you know, these things are, beautifully printed and they arrive on time mostly like this is, has to be a professional industry like why would you put out why would spider-man not be with a publisher that's doing everything right to protect that ip clearly these only the best people work at these companies right and when you what social media has taught us is it's not as well well run as you think it's not as professional as it should be there's a lot of infighting and drama and you know mean girls politics that happen all the time and there's a sort of a um, falling out of love with it. And people are a little disenfranchised when they realize the truth about it. You know, everything from that documentary about Dan Slott to, um, you know, just some of the basic things you see online. Like, I love comics, but I, I, I was demystified by it back in 2001 when I started meeting these people, right? Like, I, I, I get what it is. I'm not trashing it. I love this industry. I dedicated my life to it. But I had to fall out of love with it a little bit before I started understanding it and getting better at it. And a lot of the YouTubers and people on Twitter, it's like they can't get over that they're falling out of love with it over and over and over again and complaining about it. It's, it's just true. watching them see them go through the stages of grief or whatever, just like a lot of people have, you know? You know, that's a great point because I think it is it is that, you know, it's, it, it, it's healthy, I think, maybe when you become disillusioned, you see something and it's not everything that lived up to you. And you do, as you say, you fall out of love with it, you get some perspective. Yeah. Um, a lot of comic fans uh, and customers, they they do they they seem stuck on this endless loop where they're falling out of love with it every every week. Yeah, every yeah, week. that's not healthy. Yeah, even in video games, I mean, you know, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven was supposed to be a massive hit. It's got a what I assume to be a multi million dollar company. We all thought video games pay way better than comics, but we hear stories of uh, you know woke culture hurting or helping it, depending on your perspective. You've got artists who are on a month like crunch times when they're being asked to work eight days a week uh yeah. pay is bad benefits are bad people get fired the game comes out it's full of bugs i mean we're learning we're being disenfranchised with new industries as we're speaking you know i think it just hit comics first and we're still having a trouble getting to the next stage whatever that is <laughs> you know, it, it's it's true and it, it it is one of those cases if you put it this way um think about if the airline industry Suddenly, you had social media accounts, and those people became semi celebrities. For every family from the baggage handlers, people fueling up the planes, doing the tires, yeah. pilots, and yet, oh my and god, you, you know, I'm already scared of flying. Yeah, I don't want to know when the, the gasoline guy has a beef with the, the tire guy. <laughs> exactly, and that's that is what that's exactly what would happen. Is like you'd get to know that your pilot and your co pilot secretly hate right. each other on Twitter and they're fighting, and like you, right. you wouldn't ever want to step into that plane. And yeah. and it's like sometimes we just you know, it, it's, it's not healthy for people to see that insight. And it's yeah. also not healthy for the people inside to constantly broadcast the irritations out into the yeah. world. Like, nothing is good about this. It, it would be the equivalent of you and I are on a plane and the captain comes on. And he's like, well, there's a major problem with this airplane, but we can't tell you about it customers, but everyone else on the plane hearing this definitely come into the cockpit and I'll tell you what's wrong with the plane. <laughs> oh, you're not going to believe it. And then he just cuts out. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, exactly. Like, like imagine how annoying it would the whole thing would be if the pilot was like, uh, "Yeah, we're going to get to uh, our destination in uh, 15 minutes earlier." Chef's kiss and your baggage <laughs> totally partially lost. Yay! Nobody, nobody wants this. I no. <laughs> it, it is tough, and it is, but it is funny because. I think the promise of social media to so many was uh, you get to network, you get to talk to other artists, you get to kind of show off your stuff, promote yourself. Um, I mean, all the right things were there. It Mm -hmm. just, in order to get attention, like you said, stepping up to the microphone and actually getting that attention means you got to come with like a super hot take that people are going to take notice of. And over time that takes just got to get hotter and hotter. Yeah. I mean, you, I trying to, when people go on Twitter and they try to brown nose and kiss up to creators and like, that's something that I've, I, I'm too old to understand that. Like I, I saw that a little bit in at bars at conventions, you know, networking and all that. And I know networking now, especially under COVID is more online, but it just seems so cheap and shallow and, and like a weasel. If you're going to kiss up to these writers, you like, you actually think that it's going to get you work. I mean, is there, act, or do you just want to feel accepted? Is there like ego motive in trying to feel like you're part of the club? Like you're one of the cool kids. I, I don't, I don't really understand it. Honestly, there are people who've uh, publicly complained, which is yet another strange thing of they've replied to say something that Donny Cates wrote and yeah. he didn't like their reply. Mm-hmm. And they're openly talking about what did I do to offend Donny? It's like, I, who, what are you even talking about? There's, there's a, yeah really fair chance he never saw it. And and quite frankly, I hope he didn't because right. he did. yeah. he's wired to his computer 24 seven. You wouldn't blame Samsung television for a bad TV show. Twitter doesn't make people write hateful posts. So when we talk about this dark side of social media, what we're really talking about is the dark side of people, that dark side that makes harassers harass, that insecurity that makes you take down a photo you were excited to share, that dark side that looks at a picture of a happy family and wonders why yours doesn't look like that. Having a thicker skin is so helpful. and uh, I generally have pretty good thick skin. I, I have slipped up over the years, and there's some things I've tweeted that I wish I had, and of course, we all have those. But even I couldn't take it after a while you know like i I, just today for example right i'm off twitter i'm not on facebook or anything i have my assistant do my tweeting all that stuff you know i spent the day thinking about what i was drawing doing research drawing a boat or whatever it was i listened to some top gear a thing on space you know whatever and my my whole day my brain's been filled with happy positive things you know if i was on twitter i would have interrupted all of that with checking twitter at least 20 times finding little outrage things to be annoyed at. And my brain would have been like 50% consumed with that garbage and 50% consumed with the work I was actually supposed to be doing. And at the end of the day, like what, what do I get out of following all of that crap? You know, it, it's just a toll it, for, for me anyway. Sure. Well, I mean, I mean, isn't it, it's true that Marvel pays you a royalty based on likes, right? Or, or oh yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to know I'm paying more for anything at all, actually. At Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And that I, is, that is the only cheap shot I will take at a publisher. I'll, I'll try. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, I mean, it is, it also feels like at some point in the near future, and I think all companies, you know, regardless of comics and everybody else will come to this realization of the amount of time, that you sink. And, and this was one of the things the documentary, the social dilemma did really well. It's like, how yeah. much time do you think you spend on your phone? It's like about 20 minutes. It's like, Oh, you know, survey says two and a half hours. Right. Yeah. And, and it up, man. so many corporations, uh, bl- you know, it used to before the pandemic blocked Facebook would block Twitter from, you know, while you're in the building right? or at home, those things are open to you. People are going to yeah. go back to the office. Like I, there's going to be an uproar if, you're trying to block those social networks, but if you're a company, like, are you willing to carve out 25% of the day for that? Yeah. I mean, if I was running a publisher and most of my friends disagree with me on this, people at DC disagree with me hard on this. Uh, But I would, if I was a publisher, hire editors and people who aren't that active with social media, or if they do, they're extremely careful and they use it very rarely. Um, I think a tweet takes, you know, a minute, maybe, or five minutes if you're going to scroll and then tweet. That's like a coffee break. It's like a cigarette break. And I understand if I was a publisher, my employees need coffee breaks. But if I found out they took 50 coffee breaks the entire day, I'd be pissed. 
Sure. Like I, I'm not saying you can't get coffee, but at some point, like what what's the limit of this? And you know, the reason a, a tweet that causes drama is different than coffee, and this is obvious, but I'm gonna explain it anyway, is <laughs> the coffee doesn't like get all the rest of the people in the office all pissed off. Coffee doesn't you don't think about you know, your angry cup of coffee when you're trying to go to sleep that night. Coffee doesn't affect your sales. It doesn't distract from marketing. You know, like all the things that these random tweets do, like, you know, a publisher will be trying to roll out some big new event and then some editor or creator or whatever will say something and it's like, congratulations, you just completely sucked the oxygen out of the room and now we're all talking about this drama rather than these things that are actually making us money. And that's that's what I think that the cost is. And I just don't think it's calculated yet. I mean, now, now comics, of course, it is harder for two reasons. You have, first of all, you, you've got a lot of people who are, who are freelancers or not formal employees. So that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very, I very, that. And then also, uh, you know, I think a lot of editors and, and people looking for talent and other things, that is where they go to look for talent. So it is, yes. you know, it, it, but, and that makes it tough, right? So how do you say, hey, go use a social network, but keep your mind on business. I don't, don't right. get involved in, you know, what Trump is doing today and just, just do that. Right. And that sounds so easy, but it's, it's yeah. clearly. Yeah. No, to, to compliment my editor, Maggie, who's amazing without her and Mark Doyle, who's, who's now left without her, I, white, white night would not be as good as it is. So thank you, Maggie. And one thing I appreciate about her and I compliment her a lot is I'm so glad that she's not that active on Twitter she mostly uses it to scout new talent, which is right. exactly what yeah. a good empl employee should be doing. And um, I've never seen an outrageous tweet or seen her on Bleeding Cool. Or, But yeah, I wish every editor at DC tweeted like her. And I'm not trying to make her the enemy of the office because <laughs> I do really like her. She's She is great. She's got a really good reputation. And, and yep. I, what I hear is just very disciplined. And yep. that's what it takes. But it actually leads me to a question to you, which is somewhere along the lines, and maybe it's just, she's just wired the right way or, or whatever yeah. it is, you know, she's, she knows how to manage it to where she gets value out of it. Did the company help her with that? Did, did, did or do you know, did, is anybody no. here? Is anybody going, Hey, here's how it's helpful. Here's how it's harmful. Here's how to help. No. All right. So I, not, not, I don't know for sure. Uh, as far as they seem to have a reactionary policy, whereas they don't tell you how to tweet, but if you do tweet something that causes drama, then they will, call you in and talk to you, whatever that means. I'm not saying they're reprimanding you or um, cutting your pay or getting mad. I don't even know what that means, but I do know that they will call you in and talk to you and just to check, just to make sure what's the drama. Does it need to be addressed? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the company has a love hate relationship with Twitter. They would love it if no one used Twitter, I think, but it's just a part of their lives now. They can't escape it. So that's their policies. But for, um, freelancers they don't have that kind of jurisdiction of course um the most i've heard in the last year was they said uh this wasn't even at me it was just for anyone working on batman they're like i i know i hope you're all excited about the new Rat batman with robert pattinson uh mm -hmm. but w whether you like it or not just don't talk about it until the movie comes out you know just like save your opinions like let people see it for themselves and it wasn't like a you know, them laying down the law, but they would appreciate it if we just kept our opinions quiet until the actual movie came out. But, you know, obviously things have changed as far as release date and all that. Right. Well, that's appropriate. I, I mean, I think that that's, that's the right. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just, I, and I think maybe. And something I think we're going to be hearing more about in the near future is that there's a fundamental mismatch between the way our brains are wired and this behavior of exposing yourself to stimuli with intermittent rewards throughout all of your waking hours. So it's one thing to spend a couple hours at the slot machine in Las Vegas, but if you bring a slot machine with you and you pull that handle all day long from when you wake up to when you go to bed, we're not wired from it. It short circuits the brain and we're starting to find that it has actual cognitive consequences, one of them being this sort of pervasive background hum of anxiety. This isn't a problem just for the comics industry. I think all kinds of companies have this right now where there, there is a, another kind of reckoning where social media it's not going to go away. No, um, it there's people trying to grapple with it. There's people who are developing public personas on it and everything else. And s there's got to be some training. There's got to be some guidelines. There's got to be a you know for their own good of like yeah. here, here's how you can use it that helps you, and here's how you can use it that's going to cause right. you a lot of pain and us a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah. I would like. I wrote to DC and I asked them that if there was more that they were going to do and. They just don't feel comfortable taking more of a leadership role in that with their freelancers at this point. 
Um, well, there's some legal, res- there's some problems if they do. I mean, if, if you start yes. treating your freelancers, your independent contractors like employees, you open up the door to a lot of problems. Uh, yes, I, yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't really know what I was looking for. I just wanted to know if there was more of a plan coming because I honestly wish there was one because I feel like a lot of my peers are sometimes, you know, stepping in mud that could be avoided and it's not necessarily helping us. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny, that analogy I texted you last week about the Viking ship. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to clean that up, but I think it was something like, I feel like comics is a tiny Viking ship. And we're all in it and we're trying to pull as hard as we can and row our weight. And I feel like I'm pulling 110%. Try, I'm writing and drawing my own book. Uh, everyone I hire, work with, I try to get the best. And like everyone around me is, is doing their best to keep this industry moving. And there's people in the fucking back of the boat <laughs> that are dragging their hands in the water, pedaling backwards or not paddling at all. And they're complaining that their paddle's not the right size and not getting paid enough. And there's just like, it's not helping the boat move forward at all. Uh, and then there's the the captain that's steering the boat, and he's totally not aware of the rocks that are right in front of us or the storm off on the horizon. And it's like, I, I this is why I don't actually like to, despite what I'm currently doing, complain that much. It's because I just don't feel like it's even worth it because it's just all I can do is protect my thing, my my wife's book, the, the people I work with, and just my small little thing I've carved out in the industry. But I don't feel like I can ever fix the other problems. And that really bad analogy I just described, you know, it just seems like too big of a problem. And I should just get my own Viking boat. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a hard, I mean, it, it, it's gotta be hard because I think I do believe and and this where I'm sure I'm very naive, but I believe a lot of the people who, you know, to use your analogy, have their arms in the water <laughs> or staring yeah. at random directions. <laughs> I, I think they think they're, they're trying to benefit something. I, I think there's, I, I don't yeah. think there's somebody actively just trying to go in the other direction. I think it's just, yeah. you know, it's a case in many ways. Maybe it's a social trap of they go on, yeah. on Twitter and they like, I'm, I'm really worked up about this election. So I need to talk about it at least 50 times a day. And right. Yeah. And, and there, there's no like person tapping their shoulder going, Hey, I'm as worked up about this election as you are. I also dislike this guy. I also yeah. have, it. but you sound like a crazy person when you talk about it this much. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. there's no, there's no warning sign. Yeah. And with cancel culture, some of the people at the back of the boat are trying to shove each other out, <laughs> which is also sure. fun. Yeah. Cause it's a small <laughs> boat. It's like we got to make yeah. room for me. <laughs> out of right. here. Yeah. I know. I, the reason that, you know, it's like what, what, at the end of the, if you're trying to be a creator in comics, there's only a handful of things you get to feel good about. You, a paycheck, one is respect, one is yeah. like control of your career. Um, and these, a lot of creators don't feel like they have any of that. Uh, yeah. To their credit, they're not being paid very well, which is super yeah. frustrating. They don't feel like they're in control of their careers. They know how competitive this industry is. They're fucking stressed out. Mm-hmm. You know, working from home, being it's another strike against you. It's just, it's hard to, to pull that off. And at the end of the day, I feel like they have, all right, I can't make money. I don't have respect. But what I can do is get angry about the same thing with people online and get likes. And that yeah. feels as good as a paycheck sometimes because that's all they have. And it's, it's, an, it's another addiction. And I don't necessarily blame them for thinking that way, but Yeah. Well, and it's a case where the social, this is where I believe, I mean, I believe that social networks and this is where all those documentaries come in. They, they yeah. desperately want that exact thing to happen. They want you right. angry. They want you posting this stuff. They want the outrage because there's uh, plenty of proof that that will keep you coming back. It will get more people in. Yeah. They'd love if you did a hot take that everybody will argue with. That makes yeah. them. You know. Yeah. Now that's why, I mean, I know with my, um, lowercase f fame and comics that people were just dying for me to take sides over anything in the past year like tell us how much you hate trump or attack this group attack that group or finally we're going to know where sean really stands blah 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 blah. and uh, like you i don't like being told what to do i uh i think that there it's i don't see this as black and white at all i see a lot of gray area i generally line up as a, as a liberal um but i basically started getting attacked because i wasn't angry enough and i wasn't falling in lockstep with what they were doing and the heartbreaking thing for me was um the friendships that were scarred by this when i go to a bar at a convention i don't i just want to enjoy everyone and i don't even want to know what they're tweeting about because it's just going to make me annoyed 
Um, like I, I, I knew creators who were uh, attacking me and saying really shitty things about me. I saw them at a bar and I go up and I've just totally fucking pretend that I didn't even hear that. And I would just treat them. I try to win them over with niceness, basically and just play stupid. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, honestly, after a while that didn't even work. So it's like, I, I just, I can't be on Twitter cause I don't want to know what they think about me. When I see them at a bar, I'm just gonna, I'd rather be ignorant and just enjoy my time together with this person. And maybe they'll come around and realize I'm not such a bad guy rather than stew over my beer about that thing that they said, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I mean, I completely do, and man, I'll have that beer with you. So we'll just, yeah, no, please, <laughs> you're a safe yeah. space, bitch. <laughs> I mean, it gets it gets very exhausting, and and I think so. Now you've been off Twitter for quite some time, or uh, I don't know, in in, in two thousand yeah, like, six terms. or seven months, yeah, yeah, which is like fifty years in uh, in current. <laughs> but uh, so, how how do you feel? Are Much things, better. Yeah. I think there was a detox period after, you know, the first few weeks, it was hard not to just check, just even like a vanity search my name just to see like are people attacking me for leaving. Are they calling me a coward? Are they saying I'm bending a knee? Like which side is attacking me for what? And uh, it, the beauty of it was when you're not there to hear the criticism from either side, they move on. Yeah. So, you know, my friend was saying, you know, it's too bad you left. Like no one even talks about you anymore. I'm like, People are buying my books, though, you know, <laughs> buy the books. And I, I mean, that's that's music to my ear. That's actually what I would always want to hear is somebody telling me nobody nobody talks about you anymore. Perfect. Yes. We've, see, they see that as a loss. Like you lost your followers and you lost your your ability to to weigh in. But I see it as a gain because I didn't actually lose any. Co- like, I'm curious what you think, Perch. People who buy White Knight, for example. How many of the, my customers actually are on Twitter and actually follow me and actually really care about my tweets? Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're less than 5%. Yeah, at less than 5%. So even when it feels like the world is coming down on me and everyone hates White Knight or loves it, it, it does it's a non it's an accounting error at best. It's like not even a, a real percentage. And most of my customers are just normal people who you know, go to the shop on Wednesday, they see the next book, they read it and they go, oh, I like this or not. And that's their relationship with Sean Murphy. And that's kind of the best part of it. You know, a lot of the stuff that happens on Twitter and social media is just inconsequential. We get rewarded by parts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. A whole generation is more anxious, more depressed. I've been doing these sales videos and I, I, kind of chart out the numbers and and one of the ones that I know that's coming up relatively soon um, and I think it was one with uh, I think oh it's a Miles Morales and yeah. what I did was I looked at there were a couple of moments where the writer of that book uh, made some controversy there's a controversy on right a big angry controversy so let's look at the sales uh-huh. and there's no discernible anything <laughs> or down. yeah you know and, and it cuts both ways there's places where you know the the you know he yeah. got his tweet retweeted like a ton and it went viral and it was really, really popular. Right. No impact to the comic at all. Yeah. That's so important that, uh, that you've, I'm so glad that that's the truth because that's what I suspected, but I I don't research things like you do. I mean, definitely, you know, you get the crowdfunding stuff and you get those books where the audience is being generated from social media and that's going to have more of an impact. But for the day to month, it's like, you know, somebody shows up, they want to buy Spider-Man. They don't want to buy Spider-Man. I, I, And I, I, I hear their fans, I think, really, and customers, they want to believe that that being angry about tweets is going to have a big sales impact. But the reality is, no. it's, it's not, yeah. not. Not on a basic level. I mean, over time, a lot of things, but generally that behavior, it doesn't translate like people think it does. No. You know, I think that creators are mistaking the daily metric of their likes and their interactions. They're mistaking that for um, a numerical grade on how hard they worked that day or how well they did professionally that day. And there's no connection. That's the illusion. But they're so admired in this that they can't see it. It's like a drug. And it's funny because you tell them this directly. Most of them will go, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. And they'll they'll yes you to death. Oh, totally get it. Yeah, obviously, Sean, I know it's bad, but, you know, whatever. I'll... But they don't, and they're not, they're, they're stuck no in it. They can't see the trees of the woods or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's that I don't have a problem. Everything's fine. I know how to handle. I know how to handle. Yeah. I got this right. bike in this car. I'm going to be fine. Yeah, you know, I think the thing that I, I wish the top 
creators in comics, like the top 5% or 10%, their etiquette really affects the culture of the entire industry. And I wish that the people who are really big names would really be careful and think about what they're doing. Because if you're a huge name at a company and you're pissed off at a tweet and it's connect, it ends up on bleeding cool. Well, now everyone in the office has to be pissed off. Now the marketing team has to be upset. You know, you're calling yep. people like it, it trickle. It's like, it makes waves in all directions. Like if I got, if I flipped out at something, well now DC has to flip out because I'm yep. a big asset to them. And now I've got, I've taken the time of, you know, 20 employees to deal with whatever the thing is I'm upset about. Um, and I'm not in a big network of other creators. Like I don't have a lot of friends in comics. Um, but I just feel like, the ones, the, the creators out there who just indulge in this stuff all the time, they're forcing the hand of their publishers, which then it turn it affects the readers, at least online. It's just this, the toxic culture that we're looking at is caused by the people at the top setting the example. And I wish that they would just knock it off or at least be careful or tone it back a little bit. Um, yeah. And that's the other thing that got me attacked on um, Twitter was I was uh, telling people that I would, I was going to quit. No, I didn't. I think I just left. Actually, I didn't tell anybody. Oh, but the very fact that I would push back against social media at all, that the fact that I didn't block anybody pissed yeah. off a lot of people because me not blocking made them feel bad for blocking. So what are they going to do? They attack me, stuff like that. Yeah. You need to block because that's, uh, that's how we Apparently, turn around here. Yeah. yeah. How dare you not block? Here's yeah. the list of people you should block. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's very it's it's very strange, and I, again, it, none of this seems to matter. And, and the, the the weird part is that I see this opinion circulating a lot more recently, saying, "Hey, mm-hmm. look at all these disgruntled fans who are angry about things in comics." And hey, look at the sales numbers. We are not seeing yeah. that huge drop off. Somebody says they they refuse to support Miss Marvel, and the sales yeah. this month are the same as the sales a, a year ago, and they're right. Yeah. But it also cuts the other direction, which is, hey, look at everybody liking and retweeting and all this stuff about this this perfect you know, chef's kiss book. Mm-hmm. And, oh, the sales are also the same as a weary year ago. All this stuff is just yeah. noise. But like you say, the, the investment of everybody in the office having to get behind it and, and all this time, the, the, yeah. the, to me, the fatal flaw is like this is a lot of time that is not going toward comics. It's not yeah. going to new stories, new art, anything. It's yeah. – Sometimes, yeah, it's making us not like each other. It's 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 creating a civil war uh, around sure. Star Wars or Miss Marvel, and you know, editors just roll their eyes at fans. It's like they're paying your bills, even if you feel that way. You cannot, you can't roll your eyes at them. Like who hasn't? None of you have worked retail ever. You can't do that. <laughs> you know? No, it's it's well, I and mean, comics it should have it pretty easy because. You can roll your eyes at them in your house, in your living room. You just need to, yes, you don't need yes. to then describe your rolled eyes to everybody exactly. in the world on social media. Yeah. It's yeah. a better point. Yeah, that's, that's what I should have said. <laughs> Grown all you want. You're, you're, it, like you're perfect. You have it way better than retail because you, you can give whatever angry face you want. You can yeah. be disgusted, but nobody yeah. needs to ever know. I'll find that I spend hours on Instagram and Snapchat and just end up feeling sorry for myself. I wonder why people who I haven't even spoken to in years look like they have their entire life together, and I don't. I wonder why it looks like everyone's having the best time ever. And with these photos quite literally in my face all the time, it's so easy to wonder, why am I not that pretty? Why am I not that skinny? Or why am I not that popular or cool? You know, I was, um, I don't think I've ever told this story. I was at a show in Savannah big military town. Um, this guy comes up to me. He's like six foot six, red hair, tied back. He's fit as fuck. He was uh, some special forces guy. And he, uh, uh, comic skate had just started. And I didn't know what it was. I uh, don't, I'm so busy that I really haven't seen or heard who, which group is where and what they said. I just certainly don't remember what they said at the time. Um, but for anyone on either side who's attacking other people, and trying to dunk and just being an asshole and you're an asshole. But at this time it was all new to me. I didn't know what the hell was happening. And he told me that he was a comic skate and I was like, okay. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Yell at him now. He just waited in line to see me. I know a lot of my creator friends would want me to. Um, and I was talking to the guy and he's serving our country. So I always do the, you know, thank you for your, for your service and all that. 
and I said, well, um, what is, oh, oh, he starts talking about his daughter and he goes, well, I've got two daughters. We adopted a black daughter or he thought he showed me his kids. One of them was black. He didn't say as a black daughter cause that'd be weird. So yeah. he's a white guy who adopted a, uh, a daughter of a different race and his older daughter is a lesbian. And I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't line up with what I've heard about what my friends are saying about this group. And as I was talking to him, I'm like, man, I really like this guy. And uh, you know what? He might have voted for Trump. And I'm certainly not going to, you know, talk him out of that standing right here. You know, if I was alone with him in a bar for an hour, I might ask him questions. And you know, he, might, he might ask me questions about why I voted for Hillary or whatever. And that's that's fine. But uh, I, I just feel like that's a good example of how fucking complicated it is. It's just not yeah. as simple as labeling a group one thing and assuming they're all the same. And um, when you're face to face, especially when the guy is six six, I mean, you know. <laughs> and I said, you know what, man, I don't know a lot about that group right now. I've heard a lot of rumblings. I, I will say that some people in that group seem to be uh, saying and doing things which, you know, you wouldn't want your daughters to be around and reading. So you know, maybe check into it some more. But you know, if, if, it, if it fits you, you're, it's a free country, have at it. You know, thanks for buying the book. I kind of left it at that. And, you know, my job when I see people at shows is to send people away happy. But I think about that guy a lot when I, well, back when I was on Twitter, we were supposed to be all attacking the same group or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's not black and white, though, you know? And even if I was sure that his group was all evil, like, I don't know if me yelling at him is necessarily going to work, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're grabbing my you. book and be like, I'm not signing this for you. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, I just don't, like, what do you, when you have a line of uh, 200 people of all different political uh, persuasions and you're working for a company that needs you to pay bills, it just, it gets a lot more complicated than just dunking on people on Twitter. I think you put a human face to it and that yeah. changes things radically. And it's why, you know, I, I think the, the interactions, you know, what's funny throughout all this is you rarely hear stories about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this creator was at a show and they were so terrible. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll never buy that creator again. Instead, it's almost always this person on social media said this dumb thing and now I'm angry and, and they're yeah. bad. I'm bad and everybody's bad. But rarely at the show. And, and the, the times people complain about people at the show, it's like, hey, the guy never showed up for a signing or, yeah. you know, got too drunk and then threw up on me at the in the gas lamp district somewhere. Yep, that happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's like, that's, that to me is a more healthy world. Like that's a yeah. world where, you know, obviously there's problems, but it's not, it's not this kind of immediate, I'm going to just assume who you are and who I am based on right. baseless interaction. You know, right. it seems, yeah. seems silly, but yeah, I, yeah, the, the, it's a trap. It just feels like a big trap. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, and this is the most political I'll get, but. 70 million people voted for the guy that you hate. You know, it's not like a small group of KKK people like you want to think. It's way more complicated than that. Um, and people yeah. are not stupid. They, they believe things for reasons, whether they're, you know, family first or worried about the economy or, you know, whatever, immigration or paying their bills. Like, they have reasons for voting the way they do. And I don't think our job is to shout at them until they concede or get them to take a knee. I think we have to try to explain calmly our side and try to win them over with better ideas. That's just always been how you change hearts and minds. And, you know, you look at the attacks that are going out on social media. It's just, so, that's just, it's not at all. That so defies what our hero has told us, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, all the, all the years of comics. And this is, this is where it's, it's particularly it gives me a headache because yeah. we have 60, 70 years, I mean, and more, but we have yeah. decades of heroic yeah. moments of people rising to be better than themselves of saying, yeah. you know, we solve this with words, not fists, all this. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I sent you a bunch of quotes. If you want to put them up yeah. now or whatever, but a few from wonder woman stood out a better Ray bill quote stood out. The one that made me start thinking this way, before this, I sent Perch a bunch of quotes from heroes and I go, man, look at all these great quotes from like Iron Man and Beta Ray Bill. When I see people who apparently love comics, both readers and creators going at it on Twitter, like, do they remember at all what Master Splinter said about, I don't know what I sent you, but he said something really positive about kindness and forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so many great quotes um, from all these characters. You know, I, you know, Wonder Woman and Iron Man, the Master Splinter. Choose what holds us back and what moves us forward. 
Right. Um, you know, Optimus Prime, strong enough to be gentle or kind. Um, that was the big one for me. That so sorry. Yeah. So I was watching that uh, the toys that made us, and Peter Cullen, the voice of uh, Optimus Prime, was talking. And uh, a lot of people in comics love this quote because he based off he had a very strong voice, obviously. And his brother, who is a military badass of some kind, said to him before he went out the door to audition, he's like, remember, you should do the voice. He's strong enough to be gentle or strong enough to be kind. And uh, everyone's like, man, Peter Cullen's so awesome. Fucking Optimus Prime. Transformers rule. Yeah. Like most people in comics generally like yeah. Peter Cullen and all that. Right. And they probably love that quote. But when you when you look at what they're doing on Twitter strong enough to be kind is not at all like they completely fucking forgot what peter collins said in that documentary it's a good way to make example. People angry. <laughs> it's, it's a great so i did this bit on twitter ironically enough uh where i took kind of classic moments of comic characters and then i just i i re-lettered them uh-huh. with current tweets and so look at how this works like when captain <laughs> america is standing there going fuck them all to death make them eat shit and like doesn't that seem weird to you like <laughs> It shouldn't and, and it was funny because it was such a striking point but man it did piss right. people off i will say i or got one black. of uh spider-man saying uh you know editors are on here too so watch what you say yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. you know with great power comes fuck you and it's like mm, yeah okay. cool um it, it yeah. is it definitely like i said i, I got blocked by a couple of people for that but um it it is <laughs> it is striking because it is, this is the, of all the industries, this is the one where, you know, there are heroes and there are villains and it is, yeah, it, it, you know, it, we're, you're, we're made to appeal to be better. And right. I, I mean, how much of, of wonder woman's, uh, you know, current thing is that, is that she's, she's the, the one of the most powerful hero, the most significant hero, mm-hmm. because she, she teaches peace and she teaches hope and forgiveness and all the rest. Yeah. And, and to yeah. see them layered side by side with the, you know, if I ever run into this guy at the back of the con, I'm going to punch him in the mouth. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and we're, we're, are we, our trade is, uh, my task is to write Batman and other heroes in a way that breaks down morality in different ways for readers to consume and reach them in different times. Right. Um, that's what we're all supposed to be doing. I, I inherited Batman from the people who were work from Frank Miller. I, he inherited from, you know, all the way back to Bill Finger and Bob Kane. And yeah. there's a legacy here of uh, what these people did before us and the, the, the words they use and the quotes and all that stuff. And then for, if I just got into the, the Batmobile, so to speak, and I'm like, all right, well, I got Batman now. So I'm just going to ignore all that shit and do this, this, that, and blah, 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 like that. And Batman is not necessarily like a moral compass character, like, like Wonder Woman might be, but it's just, it's crazy to me that the job here is to break down morality, to give us like, to, tales just like you, you refer to the greek gods for for w- basic wisdom on the high morals of humanity that's what our trade is here and i don't look i don't go on twitter and see the high moral road of humanity at all and that's what we're supposed to be doing like the reason you got into wonder woman is because you must have loved these quotes and what she stood for so where yeah. is that morality exactly when you get onto twitter and you start blasting people and i don't i'm not specifically going after anyone who's not wonder woman that's just an example no, no, it's a, it's a, yeah, exactly. No, but it's, it's a good, we, we read these heroes growing up. They had an impact on us. They made us want to commit our lives to it. I think is, uh, yeah. I think Jeff Thorne's in his interview, you don't come into this thing for, you know, super riches and power. That's not what comics is going to give you. Yeah. Speak for yourself, Perch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's gotta be a labor of love and yeah. to, to see this stuff, it, it is, it is just very strange to me that, you know, uh, a lot of people veer more toward Lobo's personality than anything else. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if you were a Lobo fan, it looks like Twitter is just filled with Lobo fans and not <laughs> Wonder Woman or Master Splinter or Peter Cullen fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's all wound up. Yes, I don't yeah. <laughs> know. It, it, it's such a shame because as a as a technologist too, I see so much power in being able to to post art, and I get very excited when you know Jim Lee yeah. will do his own drawings in progress and all these. Mm-hmm. There's so great ways to use a technology and to use it for this feels such like such a letdown yeah honestly i mean the power to do a movie on paper at a relatively cheap cost which is how i've always viewed comics Mm -hmm. you know you need a a thousand people to make a movie you need you can do it yourself you can one guy or girl can make a comic with the words and all that and and just have total control over a little universe for, for pennies it's ink and paper and just labor 
And it's such a powerful baseball bat. You should be hitting home runs. But instead, you're using that back to go after people in the, in the crowd. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I never, I don't understand it either for the, the, the dream of what comics could be of, of the characters or, or, or even basic yeah. self preservation because nobody who's, who spends all day being a Twitter, Twitter warrior is mm-hmm. making much money. Like, no, no, honestly, like, I don't even, the way that I've been describing it sounds like everyone on, comics twitter is awful and i i honestly don't mean that at all i think there's just a handful of, of you True. know moderate radical people that i don't even know if 50 creators at tops and maybe like a thousand readers i have no idea honestly a lot less i mean that's the crazy part but, is somebody who <laughs> you know i've had people from various sides come at me at different moments and when it yeah. starts my gut reaction is always like ah oh, crap here we go it's going to be terrible and it's yeah. like, well, 12 hours later, it seems like people kind of burn themselves out. And that wasn't that bad. And yeah. this is not to dismiss bullying. And I've, I've definitely seen people get dogpiled and it's, it's, it's yeah. terrible and awful things get said. Yeah. Uh, I had some people definitely go after when I had that video with my daughters on, they were making nasty comments about my kids. Whoa, that it's, sucks. Oh yeah. It was very tough to hear, yeah. and, uh, but it, it did go away and it did, yeah. you know, it didn't, I didn't change my entire life because of this moment and, and just say, well, I'm going to out mob you that right. that would get, in, get nobody anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Getting a, like one. So you did a few videos about people, how they deal with critiques or criticism and how people really aren't good at dealing with them in comics. Um, and uh, yeah, getting doc, it's like one comment or two is easy to let it just bounce off your chest. But when 20 people, with three different accounts each just dogpile you it, it does feel like the world hates you it's really hard to like even people with the thickest skin are going to have a hard hard time with that you know mm-hmm. absolutely i and, but that's that's in many ways it's the power you've given social media to yes you know they, they've got an open pipeline into your brain and so people are going to use that to dump negative stuff at you yep. but you control that pipeline And numerous studies from the U.S., Canada, the U.K., you name it, have linked this high social media use with these high levels of anxiety and depression. But the scary thing is that high social media use is almost everyone I know. It's my friends, it's my family, my colleagues. 90% of 18 to 29-year-olds are on social media. We spend on average two hours a day there. We don't even eat for two hours a day. Is it is it true? So from the outside, <laughs> a lot of questions about this. Is there yeah. a, an attitude a little bit that younger creators shouldn't ask older creators for advice or shouldn't look up to them because older creator styles are are old and it's mm-hmm. in their interest to avoid? Like, right. I get that question a lot from from people who listen. Like, is there some like you have to? And I always, I lap this off, but then it was coming to that Walter Simonson bit of like, well, that, that Twitter account never says anything interesting. It's, it's, yeah. you know, ignore it. It's like, I mean, that was, it, it caused me to rethink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when I got in at, uh, con- into comics, I didn't even know what conventions were. I was at SCAD uh, art school in Georgia and um, a sequential art major, which is a great way to never make money, but somehow I made it work. And uh, my friend, I met these guys who were serious and they were nice and, you know, not, not introvert at all. They were pretty nice, fun extroverts. We went out drinking and he's like, oh, we're going to the convention. I go, what's a convention? He goes, well, we're going to a mega con. It's this comic book convention. I'm like, what is that? And he described to me what I thought would be like a giant comic book flea market with professionals and editors there. Um, so I was like, all right. So I got in a car with him and, and um, some other people and it ended up being my, one of my closest friends, Sean Crystal, Andrew Robinson, who's one of the most talented artists in the industry, yeah. Chris Bruner, and a handful. I really, na- I met the right folks right at the beginning. And they're like, we're walking the show, bring five pages, put in your portfolio, don't say anything weird. If you get a card from a, a, an editor, great. You get home, you follow up with them, you check in with them every two months. Um, we'll go to this uh, party after, don't bring your portfolio. Just be nice, listen, you know, offer people Tic Tacs, like, they gave me like the quick breakdown of how to human with these people. And I'm they're like, the reason we brought you here isn't because of your art. It's because you're a normal dude and it's hard to find normal people. Comic. So that's yeah. why you're here with us. Cause you're not going to like, great. And I picked it up like that. No problem. And I, I think that's the closest I've ever had to having like an older, uh, wiser 
person around me who'd been around to sort of give me the bullet points on how to be and how to act. But this was way before Twitter. Yeah. I, it, it, it's funny you walk through it that way because I, all the people I've known who've been successful or, or happy in their career have at least some, when I've heard the story, it's always like yeah. a bunch, you said the exact same words I've heard from others, which is I, I had a bunch of normal, I had some normal people who wanted yeah. to hang out with me because I was normal. <laughs> By yeah. contrast, I remember uh, an editor uh, who will remain nameless and some other creators, uh, we, we hooked up at, at, to have some some mm-hmm. snacks. I didn't really know these people, but it, but it's like, yeah. hey, we're going to go to Old Town and we're going to have absinthe until, until we can't figure out how to get home. What? A show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Whoa. ah, okay, that's the opposite path <laughs> of what to do. Yeah. And absinthe, too. I mean, just... Get drunk on licorice and cough syrup. Jesus Christ. No, I, I never understood the past. <laughs> That's a whole other topic, by the way. But yeah. I, like <laughs> when I was in uh, high school, the, the thing was like, hey, we got some Jägermeisters. Like, that's a terrible drink. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, it is. You know, I was, I was the old man at, at 16. It's like, get some whiskey in here. You know, uh, some, one day, you and I are going to be the bar perch. Someone listening yeah. to this right now, if you go up and buy perch and I a Jaeger. <laughs> we will drink it in front of you. It's the only way we're going to have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I will regret every second of it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, it feels like this is an industry though, that, that is begging for, for good mentorship. And, yeah. and it desperately, if you, if you were a comic publisher and, and you were in this awkward place where you didn't really want to claim the, the freelancers, the independent contractors, right. What you could do is create a mentorship program like like take a guy like chris claremont who you're paying and say hey you know we're not paying you to write comics but how about you Mm -hmm. become a mentor to some writers and teach them the ropes and right yeah yeah. or if if dc paid said we want you to go to the show we're going to bring in a lot of our younger creators and we want you to speak and like hang out we're going to do like a a luncheon there'll be some (laughs) some drinks there um but if you could share some of your ideas and some of these things, and you know, maybe you, they could like learn from your example. Assuming I have an example that DC wants to perpetuate, but yeah, that's that would be something that I think would be helpful. But as I said to you uh, via text, who's going to do that? Because you need to have a creator who has got clout, who, who's like somewhat respected, and people will listen to them. Has yeah. the time to do it, uh, can verbalize correctly, the way I am now, like. Let's just say I do have most of these qualities, and I think I do. I t- I'm probably more well-rounded in comics than a lot of folks out there from what I can see on Twitter. But even yeah. I wouldn't want to do this because I don't want people to – like, look what happened to me on Twitter. I, I tried to be everyone's friend and be as, as cool as possible and non-judgmental and helpful, and what did I get for it? You know, like, why even – why would I even take that risk, you know? So like, I would rather not be in that position and and to to counter what I had said five minutes ago, maybe I wouldn't want that because I just have too much to lose. So I just don't see a lot of candidates who have their shit together enough to be able to teach these things in a clear way, patient way, in all the qualities that you would want in someone like that. Well, I think, I think there's a hybrid model. I think if, you know, cause yeah, you know, Scott Snyder's obviously he's done his, his workshop and there's many yep. these pieces and that's good for kind of teaching the, the, the trade, but it's, it's almost yep. like there needs to be another piece to that of, right. Hey, this is all in your self-interest, by the way, this is not the company mm-hmm. telling you, this is not us forcing a social media policy. We're not going to tell you who yeah. to block, block. This is all about just your own sanity. We want you to be healthy. Good right. People. This is like yeah. a wealth class. <laughs> yeah. And I think if, if the publisher initiated that and the publisher said, look, this is something we're going to do. So we, we call in Sean and he's going to talk to you, but it was mm-hmm. driven from that angle. I think, I, I think it, it would at least lower some of that. Maybe I'm being naive, but I think it would lower some of the, the backlash and the other nonsense at the other yeah. end. I think I it would know. help a little bit. I think it, the people who are, the creators who are smart would see the wisdom. And, you know, people that are really meant for this and are good at social media, you don't have to tell them this stuff more than once because they pick it up pretty quickly, you know. Um, But, yeah, if you put them in the presence of good ideas that Scott Snyder has, for example, like Mm -hmm. if Scott taught a class on, like, you know, or did a seminar on, you know, etiquette at conventions and tips for networking and social media, whatever, like, it would be nice if he could affect the culture in a positive way because, sadly, the culture is out of control right it's just 
really negative and bad right now. We have a culture problem in comics is the way I think of it. <laughs> we do. And, and it's, uh, I, I think maybe we have to start assuming that people don't know as much as we think. Uh, I got a response to uh, one of the videos where I was talking about conventions and I gave the advice of like, Hey, drink water yeah. throughout the day. <laughs> You're less likely to get super nasty hammered later. Yeah. Drink water and eat, like get some cliff bars. If you can't make your way to right. the, to lunch and and um there was an artist that i talked to who was like thanks that was great advice i i hadn't thought about it that way before i'm like yeah you hadn't thought about drinking water during the day okay but yeah no it's yeah. i mean it's funny you, just, you i heard that one too and i was like you know what i usually do my first liquid when i go out is whiskey i should probably follow purchase advice and drink water <laughs> like, that was healthy as ice even for me and i know that but i just hadn't thought about it for a while <laughs> it's easy to i mean it's easy to, to get into it and it's like yeah social media is not a fundamental technology it leverages some fundamental technologies but it's better understood as this which is to say it's a source of entertainment it's an entertainment product the way the technologist jaron lanaire puts it is that these companies offer you shiny treats in exchange for minutes of your attention and bytes of your personal data, which can then be packaged up and sold. So to say that you don't use social media should not be a large social stance. It's just rejecting one form of entertainment for others. It should be no more controversial than saying, I don't like newspapers, I like to get my news from magazines, or I prefer to watch cable series as opposed to network television series. It's not a major political or social stance to say you don't use this product. I don't. It, it's it's puzzling because I think in in it's it should be a very simple industry. Um, it it to to the earlier point, it should be an industry where we have lots of heroes, lots of templates. Yeah. And yet, uh, you know, a lot of reasons why it doesn't work. Uh, from the isolation part to the fame part to what social yeah. media does to people, all these people, and then this kind of maybe this underlying thing. If there's a problem, there seems to be a reluctance in the industry to say something. So you don't want to be a complainer. Yeah. But on the same time, you're you're on social media complaining all the time. So like, yeah, that bubble going to get burst. Yeah, yeah. If there was, I mean, after, once COVID's over, it would be nice if comics got proactive and started um, running a cleaner ship somehow. Yeah. You know, and I agree. It would be nice if there was a soft mentorship program of some kind, just to give some guidance. Um, you know, clear rules on social media. You know. You know, yeah. for especially for freelancers and editors, all of us, you know, and how to deal with uh, angry customers online, trolls, whatever, what not to say. I mean, I actually asked DC once because um, I got in trouble. With, I don't know what I said. Um, and I was like, listen, I'm tired of calling in. I'm tired of you guys being nervous about what I'm saying. Can you just set me up with a trainer to like, tell me what you want me to say? I don't fucking care. Like, put me in front of a camera. Make me, I'll say I'm a corporate guy now. I sold out. My punk rock Jesus days are behind me. I just don't want to lose what I got. So tell me what you want me to say. Like, make it easy for me. And they're like, okay, we've never had that request. But, you know, there are certainly people in, um, you know, the uh, marketing department who could probably do that. I'm like, great. It's, um, you know, I, I mentioned this elsewhere, but it's, and I, I do believe it will come. It's just the things are still shaking out. Uh, AT&T, and I don't know if you, if you know anybody there, you can ask for this. I swear this does exist. Yeah. They put out like a quarterly, what feels like a police blotter. Yeah. And they send it internally. And it's, it's literally just stories of employees who broke the rules in some ways. Yeah. And every single story ends with, and the employee was terminated. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of comical in a way, and it's comical and sad at the same time. And it, it, the employee was terminated or the employee was terminated and we pursued legal action. Mm -hmm. and it's, but on the other hand, it, it does serve as a really clear reminder, <laughs> like, hey, yeah. You know, if you're a technician and you go inside somebody's house to repair a phone line and you decide to, you know, steal their underwear, you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm. food. You know, yeah. and, and it, it feels like comics needs some level of like, yeah, here's, here's what's going to happen. But, you know, the, the, the pushback is uh, the reason that people work in comics is because they didn't want to wear a suit and a tie and work in a cubicle. Right. And they, they wanted to work in a free, more artsy environment where they could be express themselves in more free ways. They don't want that fascist uh, office environment. And what you are, what I am also describing, these rules that we're suggesting are like, they're not down with that. Um, no, I don't know, like, they, they have to understand, like, listen, there's, sac there's compromises that come with your paycheck. I'm not telling you that you can't be on tw Twitter, you know, a few times a day, but if you're rattling cages, you know, every five minutes, Jesus Christ, give it a rest, you know?
Yeah. For, for your own sanity, if nothing else. I mean, it's. Yeah. There should be a and line for your bosses. That. Yeah. And, and, and your, your peers and your coworkers, the other people working on the book with you. I, it, yeah. There should be a, a difference between, Hey, I get to wear my, uh, I get to wear my concert t-shirt to, to work and I'm, I'm in slippers instead of shoes and <laughs> yeah. today. cool versus, Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go online and just scream at people for three hours straight and, and yeah. uh, not how I hate my company. You know? Right. Well, when I have my imaginary publishing company and you are going to obviously be my marketing guy and I'll be basically run the day to day. Uh, we'll have rules like uh, no social media. We'll block porn sites as well as Twitter and Facebook. And uh, But we will have Hawaiian shirt day. It will have Hawaiian shirt day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friday Jaeger drinks, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's what it comes Just like the dollar, a currency is literally something we use to attribute value to a good or service. In social media, these likes, the comments, the shares, they've become this form of social currency by which we attribute value to something. Hey, uh, anything else? Um, I, I don't know. I, I've just, it's, it, I've really enjoyed having this chat with you. And um, were there any other yeah, thoughts? Always. Believe and Yeah, no. You know, I guess the one story I, I didn't want to tell was uh, I, I, the first time, I feel very lucky that I got a taste of what was coming on social media very early on. I had this um, apprenticeship that I did where I took it. This is like five or six years ago. I wanted to do an anthology. I've got five students to pay uh, make me a fee. They lived at my house. They stayed with us. My wife cooked for them. We all became friends. And I vetted them too. So I didn't get any you know, child molesters in there or anything like that. Like I was very careful. Um, and we put this anthology together called Cafe Racer. If you go on eBay, you might be able to find some. I'm all sold out. Um, and then they took this these these copies and they sold them as shows and they made all their money back. So it was win, win, win. You know, I got to make this house I bought as a write-off because I basically turned it into a school. Um, I made money and I was able to furnish the house with the money that the students gave me. They made their money back. And, you know, I took all of them and did everything I could to help them get into, you know, to mentor them and to get them into comics and take them to shows and whatever. And I'm still friends with most of them right now. Um, I started to do round two and I got 70 submissions from straight white guys. <laughs> um, and... Twitter wasn't as hot as it is now, but I could definitely see how it would be problematic, quote unquote, when us, you know, when we take photos and it's just me and five white guys. So I was going online. I'm like, you know, women, I need you to apply. I need, you know, I don't want to say I need black people because I just didn't feel comfortable, but I did want to say I need diverse people to qualify to to send me their stuff. And in my head, I was willing to take any woman who gave me any. I don't care how good or bad you were. I just needed the balance my class. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, because I was doing that, I ended up on a private Facebook chat room where people thought I was some kind of weird sexual predator. Hmm. And there were these people in comics. Most of, most of them didn't know me, but a few did. And they were like, who's this weird guy who lives in Maine? Who's trying to get women to live with him and his wife for the (laughs) sake of comics. Like I get it. When I say it like that, yeah, it sounds fucking creepy. Um, so no one, a few of my, well, we're not friends anymore. A few women I knew were on that group and saw this happen and didn't say anything to me. So thanks ladies. Um, someone eventually did let me know. And, uh, one of my students, uh, she heard about it too. And she went on to this chat room to defend me and say, Sean's not that guy. His wife's there the whole time. It's, he's just trying to help, like, you know, leave him alone type thing. And mm-hmm. of course, they start attacking her. So uh, it started to flare up a little bit on Twitter. And I talked to my wife about it. And I'm like, this, we're at the beginning of something bad here. I don't know what to do. So I called my lawyer. And she, not that it matters. She's a woman, but I guess it does. And she's great. She's a friend. She used to work for Jim Henson Studios. I told oh. her all this. She's like, well, uh, you, you, you need to shut the school down. And I go, why? I really want to help people. She goes, that's nice. But you have this Netflix deal coming. And people with Netflix deals don't have five strangers stay with them for two weeks, which is a good point. Yeah. Um, she also said, you know, you're, you're in a house in a city. You're not zoned as a school. So I don't know if the city knows you're there. And if there's a slip and fall lawsuit or, you know, what if one day one of your students does attack another student? Like, there's just a lot for you to lose here. And the way that... Um, 
these this this woman's group it was all women were attacking me it's just take it as a uh, a, a nice indicator of it's a gentle reminder of kind of what what, you're, what you'll be looking at if you you know in the future so i was like but you know lillian i'm not that guy like i really wanted to help like i, I i'm being a good liberal i'm trying to help women here and i'm just getting attacked for trying to help like this this fucking sucks Are you kidding me like I'm trying to do things for, to help women and these women are, you know, slapping my hand and calling me names like this. To, all right. Happy ladies. I'm going to shut it down. Now I'm not helping anybody. Is this what you wanted? It took me a while to like get over that story. But, um, you know, if you dissect that, you can see how that's a very helpful lesson for how um, twi what Twitter eventually became as far as attacking people, trying to dunk on them, assuming the worst, all that stuff. So I think this past year, when I kept running into these, these these small dramas, I think back to my apprenticeship, into what my lawyer said, and I just do risk assessment. I think that was what was the nail in the coffin for me. Is like, you know, I really want to help. I want to be on Twitter. I want to talk to readers. I like to give advice and weigh in on these things. But if uh, my help isn't appreciated, if I'm going to be attacked, then I'm I'm going to leave. That's a painful story to hear. I mean, I'm sure it was painful to to live through too. But I mean, that's, that's because uh, it, it, I, I, you want to believe that you can go out there, you can, you can help. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. You, I mean, I've done many things and, and where you, you try and help people out and it mm -hmm. just takes one to wreck it for the 99 good people that yeah. just want to learn. Um, yeah. And it's a shame we live in that world. And I, and I think <laughs> hopefully, the takeaway there is, you know, social media is just one more avenue to, <laughs> to, you know, to, to injure yeah. your, then you are truly, you are truly helping nobody at that point. And you're also screwed. Yeah. I mean, now I'm just helping myself I and mean, my friends. I'll help them I'll help you. You know, if I can help you, your podcast in some way by chiming in on a live stream, whatever it is like, yeah, I, I want to help good people who I like and who are doing good work. But generally I've just, I pulled way back on trying to help anybody. And I, it's just self-preservation. It's fear, and it's also my wife coaxing me to don't get involved in this shit. <laughs> you have a lot to lose. <laughs> well, you have a smart wife. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the words of Stanley and his favorite comic book, Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Social media has given us an amazing advantage to communicate, to share ideas, to bring people from all around the world together. But it's also made it easier for people to fake their lives, fake a personality, and for us to become more insecure. Hopefully that things can alter and shift a little bit in the industry and, and we can get back to what, you know, is really needed. But it's, uh, it's, it's tough. I, I, it's, that'd be a very hard situation to be in where you, you, you legitimately just want to help people out and yeah. everybody makes some money and there's a win. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to appear like a victim or say woe is me or or to gain, garner pity or anything like that. It really is just like laying out the facts. Here's what's at stake. Here's what can hurt you professionally. Here's where normally well-intended people like this group of women who are online. I'm sure they meant the best, you know. In, in any other yeah. circumstance, I don't think this would have happened, but. People are on drugs right now and they're just driven crazy by whatever things and they're just they're not they're themselves, you know, and um, yeah, it's just for anybody who's thinking about reassessing their social media, all the stuff that I've been talking about in the last hour and a half is sort of like my version of what's been going on. And if it helps you great, if you think I'm crazy, that's great. Let me know on my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, Sean, thank you very much for all your time here today. And, um, and I, I appreciate your story and I hope other people. Uh, I hope it was entertaining for them too. I'm sure it is. Thanks, man. And uh, as all, and thank you for everything. And I really loved your uh, number of breakdowns. I, oh. I, my my guess is that people within the big publishers are watching those too because they're not often told the numbers of their own books at times. So I think that what you're doing is very helpful. I I, uh, I know some people are, and um, and I'm glad. So thank you very much for uh, and all your support. And and uh, you and I will catch up again soon. We'll find another topic. It's it's going to be Jaeger. Uh, oh yeah. You and me one day, face down on the floor in the gas lamp, drunk on Jaeger. It was a good uh, look. The cover was your magazine. I can see it right now. That's exactly <laughs> what it's going to be. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Take care, man. Take care. No, I'm sure there'll be a, a bleeding cool article about us right now after this, talking about these things, it's taking us out of, out of context just for clicks. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean and Perk, you have to throw away your computer if you're free. Oh, man, yeah.